However you think the guy might have done in his stock car career, Sam Hornish Jr.'s IndyCar career was amazing. Three championships, one Indy 500 win, and a grand total of 19 career wins across a span of only 8 years is amazing, no matter who you are. He became one of the IRL's first superstars, and his career really deserves its own video. However, for this video, I want to focus on his first championship in 2001, a year that I don't think many of you realize how dominant he actually was. It would be his first year in competitive equipment as he spent his rookie year with PDM Racing, a team once called Poor Dumb Mechanics by a former owner. In that rookie year, Sam still managed to get a third place finish at Las Vegas, which is really just absurd. You can look at the team's results for yourself to show how awful that team really was, but words can't describe how big of an achievement this really was. The fact he managed to get a third place finish in what was basically a tin can on wheels really shows you that Sam Hornish had some talent. That third place finish at Las Vegas would actually be the team's best ever finish, usurping the team's second best finish of seventh. However, that podium would be the only bright spot of this year, as he eventually finished 32 points behind eventual Rookie of the Year, Ayrton Dare. Over the offseason, Hornish left PDM Racing and joined Panther Racing for the 01 season. The team had found success with Scott Goodyear, but at the time of Hornish joining the team, they were only a three-win organization. With that being said, nobody really expected the year ahead. At the first race of the year in Phoenix, Sam would qualify on the front row alongside pole sitter Greg Ray. He led the first 67 laps, dropped back in the field, but then came back towards the end to lead the final 73 laps on his way to win his first ever Indy Racing League race. He led a total of 140 laps on the day and won by a second and a half. A few weeks later at Miami, Hornish would lead another 142 laps and win from a 5th place start. We're only 2 races into the year at this point, but he still leads the points by 29 and has led 70% of the laps ran this year. Although he only finished 4th at Atlanta and only led a single lap, he still expanded on his championship lead. His second Indy 500 would actually be the biggest black eye on this year. Hornish qualified 13th and finished 14th 4 laps down after an early spin. As I said before, that 14th place finish at Indy would be his worst of the year and really the only low point of this year. He would follow this up by finishing 3rd at Texas, 2nd at Pikes Peak where he led a race high 156 laps, then had another 2 runner up finishes after that. After 8 races this season, he only has those 2 wins at the start of the year, but still leads the points by 60 over Buddy Lazier. He would finish 6th at Nashville, 3rd at Kentucky and Gateway, and finally at the 2nd to last race of the year at Chicagoland, Sam Hornish Jr. finished 2nd, and thus clinched his first ever IndyCar championship. Doing so at 22 years old, he became the youngest champion in series history as a result. Although he had already clinched the championship, he didn't lay back for Texas as he got his 3rd win on the year. Now to round off this video, I just want to go over the raw stats of this season to show you how dominant it was. Of the 13 races this season, Sam DNF from not a single one of them finished on the podium 10 times and won 3 races. Of the 2,643 laps he ran this season, he led 765 of them, meaning of the laps he ran this season, he was in the lead for about 29% of them. And since he DNF'd not once that whole year, that stat also rolls over to the total laps that year period. To put that 29% laps lead percentage into context, in Jeff Gordon's insane 1998 Cup season where he won 13 races, he only led 17% of the laps he ran. Oh, and I haven't even mentioned the best stat of them all from this year. In the 2001 season, Sam Hornish had an average start of 4.9 and an average finish of 3.4. Of all of his championships, Sam Hornish Jr.'s 2001 season was easily his best, and over 20 years later, it's aged like a fine wine. Thank you for watching, and have a great afternoon.